and welcome to Get Booked. Hey Jen, what are we talking about this week? Fun animals! Yay! I also love animals as awesome supporting cast. Yes. That's how I also interpreted it. So, do you want to go first? No, go ahead. Okay. Also, hey, do you have any pets of your own? I do. I'll actually drop them in the links. I have two fantastically crazy dogs, um, Cabot and Emma. That's cool. I have a dog. Her name is Wren. And I have two cats, Juniper and Finn Mertens. So, oh, do you give your pets middle names? Because we give our pets middle names. No. Yeah, Ren is Ren Tonks. Because when we first got her, she was very uh, not coordinated. And we went into the wall because she couldn't stop. And then Juniper is Juniper Ray because we love Star Wars. Although maybe we should not have named her after such a strong-willed character. Because, OMG, I do believe whatever you name your pet, you've kind of cursed yourself. This is why we will never have dogs named Fred and George Weasley. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so do you want to go first or me? We talked about this. You're going first. That's right. I'm going first, people. <laughs> Alright, so you can't have awesome animal sidekicks without Avatar The Last Airbender. So, and this is the newest book um, in Balance that just came out um, over this fall. And we have, this is, basically I'm using this as an example. We have a ton of Avatar The Last Airbender books. And we also have Legend of Korra graphic novels as well. Uh, so anybody who's watched this show knows that uh, Momo, the um, flying ferret monkey thing, is like a huge part of the show, as well as the flying bison, uh, Appa. So they are, they are key. Um, actually, I think the Appa episode, when he gets lost, is what is the saddest thing ever for me. Um, but yeah, and of course Legend of Korra has Pabu, the fire ferret, and the polar bear dog uh, named Naga. So they are definitely part of the ensemble. What is yours next book? So my first book is Our Friend Hedgehog by Lauren Castillo and this is her first um, debut fiction book. Um, she's written some picture books, she's illustrated some picture books, um, and this is just a very sweet modern classic story with a, like a nostalgic feel to it. It's kind of a little bit like um, uh, Winnie the Pooh sort of. So Hedgehog See, there's a map, and Hedgehog and Muddy live on this island. Um, Muddy is this little character here, and Muddy goes missing during the store, and Hedgehog decides to leave the island and go find what happened to Muddy. And he meets all of these different characters along the way, and it's just very, very sweet. And I believe it's the first of the new series, which I'm really excited about. Ooh. It's very good. Cool. Uh, so my next book is one of my favorite graphic novels that's come out for middle grade in the past like year, I believe. So it's called Snapdragon by Cat Lay. Um, so this book is by the same person who has worked on Lumberjanes, so it has a little bit of that feel of like magical realism. Um, but throughout all of it, it starts off because Snapdragon, uh, which is the girl's name in this book, uh, is going looking for her dog, and she's afraid that the witch that uh, steals animals um, has stolen her dog and she's going to eat him. Uh, it turns out that she's not a witch, um, and her dog, whose name is Good Boy, because he is the goodest boy, uh, was hit by a car, and so she manages to patch him up. So now Good Boy has three legs instead of four, but Jax, the old woman who she's so afraid of and is the chief of the witch, is actually saves him. Um, and so they become friends, and this is a story about found family, as well as a little bit of a mystery involved, too. And it's just super good and delightful. And a little creepy. I love it. I always love a little creep. Let's read it. Mm -hmm. Alright, my next is a fun picture book, Bath Time with Theo and Bo. My tagline says, the only thing better than bath time is bath time with a friend. So there are two of these books. Um, Theo and Bo also do a nap time, and the pictures are just really, really sweet. Um, not a lot of text, but just fun pictures. Are we done? I love these books, and I really wish there were more of them. And if you like realistic pictures in um, picture books like this, we have one, a couple of different pink ones, and we have a couple different squirrel ones, so they're really fun. Nice. Um, my next book is The Tea Dragon Society by Katie O'Neill. Um, I definitely need to show the graphics on this. It is super cute. I have it in middle grade, but I'm thinking about maybe putting it back in children's. Um, it can go either or. Uh, it is delightful. Uh, it's so good. Um, basically, it's a story about a girl who is friends with the tea shop owners in town, and they have tea dragons. 
And tea dragons, there's not a lot of them. They're these little animals, and they actually have little antlers, and they have different types of tea. And each little tea dragon has a different personality. Like, there's one of them that's, like, super cranky, but he's not in this one. He's in the other one. So there are two books of this we have, and there's also a third one. And it's just, like, a delightfully comforting, like, storybook. And it's kind of got, like, a fairy tale feel to it. Speaking of teacup animals, those remind me of the teacup animals from Belle. Huh? The teacup animals from Belle that were always mischievous or fun, Bells. Mm. Okay, well, we both liked that book. The fantasy book. Which one? Bells. Oh, the Bells! Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I was thinking, like, when you said Belle, I was like, Beauty and the Beast, I was like, no, and then you, oh, you meant the Bells. Yes. yes, those are pretty cool. Um, but yeah, the little tea dragons, they're super cute. Yeah. Like, you, you're gonna want one. Like, exactly. you're, they made plushies, and I'm just like, why didn't I buy one? Oh, it's very cute. I should have talked about this one before. This one is The Reader. This one is illustrated by Lauren Castillo, who did um, this one here. Who wrote and illustrated the Hedgehog book. Uh, but this one is written by Amy Hest. This is probably one of my most favorite picture books ever. Um, just because it's very sweet. It's pretty cute about the dog and the child. And they go for a sleigh ride in the snow. And there's cocoa and there's books. And it's just, ugh, it's wonderful. Okay, uh, so my next one is actually a webcomic collection. It's for the older teen and adults. Um, it's actually the Johnny Wander webcomic. Uh, this is the one of their collections called Our Cats Are More Famous Than Us. And so it's a slice of life webcomic just about, it's like, was it, it's, uh, let's see, eight years, four cats, and three moves are chronicled in this omnibus. Um, and it's just like their life. And it's, like, it's funny. So if you want something that's just kind of like funny, but also there's like some, some de great dumb cat stories in it. This is, this is the one, so. Cool. My next one we've talked about before, so I'm going to just breeze through it. Find Momo, Coast to Coast. There are right now three Momo books upstairs. These are in the team section. Um, there is one um, board book, and there's a new book coming. But, so Momo is just this really cute, adorable dog, and he is hidden in all of these pictures, and you have to find them. And some of them are easier than others. Well, this one is just kind of talking about where they are, but um, some of them are a bit tricky, and it's just really sweet. Also on Instagram, Andrew Knapp is the um, author photographer. Yeah. So my next one, following the Momo book, uh, is Pumpkin the Raccoon who thought she was a dog. So Pumpkin had an Instagram. Pumpkin unfortunately has passed away, but I think Pumpkin got to live a lot longer than she normally would because she got to live uh, with a family and she thought she was a dog. Uh, they are absolutely adorable, and it's just, it's so freaking cute. Um, like, really cute. yeah, like there's a double spread here. Tag, you're it! And she's, like, standing on one of the dogs, and the dog just lets her, because Pumpkin doesn't know that she's a raccoon. Um, Emma used to do that to Cabot when she was a puppy. She would just, like, stand on him and walk over him, and he was just, like, the, All the cats when they were kittens did that to Ren, and Ren's terrified, but she also, <laughs> like, is really submissive, so she would grin, but my dog's grin is not, like, cute. It's like, oh my gosh, she's going to eat you. Um, so the first time she did it to Juniper, I was like, oh dang. And then I realized, oh no, she's just grinning. It's just frightening. That's funny. She's so cute, though. My next one is How to Speak Cat, a guide to the cat and cat language. We also have the dog version of this book, and there's just a lot of different information and cute pictures. Um, it's just fun. Cool. Um, so my next book, uh, you might have heard about this one. If you are a librarian, you definitely know about this one. It's called Dewey, the Small Town Library Cat Who Touched the World. Uh, so I believe Dewey was found in the book drop, like one rainy morning or something. Um, and so there was this little kitten, and Dewey became the library cat. And this is just the story of how Dewey the little orange library cat affected this library, and it's a pretty neat story. It's a tearjerker, but it's just like, huh, it's heartwarming. Because cats can touch your life. Heartwarming tearjerker. I'm not sure I really agree with that terminology. Well, yeah, because it's just like, so <laughs> cool that like the cat, like, you know, pulls people out of their shells and whatnot. That is funny. This one is Dogs in Cars, and it's also in our teen section, and it's literally a coffee table book about dogs in cars looking out the window multiple dogs just when you need a, something a little a bit different cool do you want to go again because i've got like two books left sure so my next one is actually four books oh okay this will work out 
this one. So this one is new. This is so these are by Seth Castillo. This is Big Dog, Little Dog. It's also going into our team section. Um, again, just some different pictures of big dogs, little dogs, having lots of fun together. Um, he's also did the underwater puppies and underwater dogs. I love underwater puppies. They're just so cute. And their eyeballs are so funny when they're going after toys. Oh my gosh, this book I just love. Ah, there's one. <laughs> just like, if you needed something happy and cheery, those are those. So these are great books for that. And then he's got two um, pool, blah, blah, puppy pool party and it's a puppy life. And those are very similar. These are also kind of underwater dog books, but there's a little story that goes along with that. And puppy life is just kind of, again, cute pictures. Um, just very sweet. Would, would your dogs get into a pool? No, my dogs hate water. Same. <laughs> like, we'll be out on a walk and it'll be a hot day and a sprinkler will be on and you're like, oh yeah, and she's just like, no, like we'll pull you in the street. Cabot will wait up to his, like, chest, and then he's like, nope, I'm not going any further. Although he did accidentally fall into a pool once, and the look of pure terror on his face was priceless. Oh, poor guy. <laughs> uh, so this next book is a true story. It's called Finding Gobi. Uh, so it's called A Little Dog with a Very Big Heart. So the story is from told from the perspective of um, this guy who, what is it, uh, Dion Leonard. He's an ultra marathon runner. And he's running across the desert, and this, this pup is just like, I'm gonna run with you. Like, it's a stray dog. And so he ends up adopting this dog, and as he's running, the dog runs with him. And so he starts letting him, he shares his meals with him, like, he stays in his tent with him, because he's, like, camping. And, um, this is now just his dog. Wait, he's running, but carrying his tent and things as he runs? Well, that it's... Sounds hard. Well, I don't know if he actually ran with his gear, or if it's, like, you have people that meet you. Right. Like when you do those big long like bike races and stuff and people right. just meet you, there's like you can't like you have to like make your destination. Got it. Yeah. So right. I'm not sure if it's like that. Um again, I haven't read this book, uh, but I think it's like that. But anyway, so either way it sounds hard. Well, we're yeah. not like runner runners. <laughs> we're more of like leisurely hiker people. <laughs> this one so my next two are fiction books because I love a good fiction book that the dog steals your heart for I'm a dog person, so I mostly read for the dogs in these books. Um, this one is The Unexpected Everything by Morgan Matson. Um, so here she is. She's a new dog, dog walker. And then on the back, it's just really funny. Um, so it's a giant long book, but it was really, really good. Um, so she's a politician's daughter. And there is a scandal and nothing works out the way it's supposed to be. Um, but she, like, sort of mistakenly falls into dog walking, and she really likes it. Um, and she meets this guy who reminds me, who's a writer, who reminds me a little bit of, like, Christopher Pavolini, kind of. Like, younger guy, bigger kind of author, like, has success early and writes fantasy. And I was like, hmm. So, of course, it's YA, and there's romance, and, you know, the dogs do funny things, because they... Cool. So my last book is a romance. It's a lady. Me too. Ooh, it's a lady who loves ladies' romance. Uh, it's Muslim Raiden's Entangled. So if you need a like Hallmark type like romance book, this is the book for you. Um, Joey has grown up on a vineyard. Like it was her dad's vineyard, and I can't remember. I think they had the land. It was like family land. They turn it to this vineyard. Her dad suddenly dies, and she's just like. Oh no, everything, all the things are changing, and then also there's a big hotel, or not hotel, it's a resort, there's a big thing about that, it's not a hotel, it's a resort, uh, it's like up on the hill, and so she can see it, and she's all like, mm, it's gonna ruin our small town charm, because you know, what's a Hallmark movie about the small town charm, you can't have a, true. You can't have a Walmart come in, um, so of course, like, Becca Crawford is managing the resort, and they meet, and of course, like, they kind of like, Headed it off until they realize who the other person is, and Becca's just like, what? What did I do? And Joey's just like, you're the enemy! And she's like, no. <laughs> but in the course of this book, Becca meets these two cowboys, um, who are a couple, which is super adorable, uh, and they have a 
on their ranch, they have, uh, part of it is like doing organic vegetables and the other part is their dog rescue. And so she goes out there and she becomes friends with them uh, and she adopts Skywalker. Uh, all the other dogs are like really cute and stuff and Skywalker is kind of like, I can't remember what it exactly is he does, but it's like, he's different from all the other dogs and she's just like, you, I get you. And so he, she shortens his name to Sky and then like everywhere like she goes, Sky goes with him, go with her, excuse me. And so like any romance that has a dog in it that's not like, oh, here's the dog. But, like, it's just backdrop. I hate that. But, like, this dog goes everywhere with Becca for the most part. And I'm like, heck yes. Because um, I hate it when they're just, like, wallpaper. You know? Because I'm just like, someone has to walk the dog. As a dog owner, I think these things. I'm like, that's great, but what did you do with the dog? <laughs> like, I hate it. Like, I'm just like, no. So, like, you know, Sky comes over to the house. Like, Sky goes everywhere Becca goes. It's great. Um, also, it takes place in a vineyard. It's so, like, cozy and nice. And, like, it's great. And the second book uh, is coming out, I think, this week. Nice. Which is the other. She usually does like friends. So it's like one friend and then the next friend and then the next friend will get the romance. That's what Jill Shelvis does. Thank Jill Shelvis. <laughs> Jill, I love Jill Shelvis. And Jill Shelvis writes a lot of animals into her stories. And they're always so stinking cute mm -hmm. or stinking terrible because, you know, dogs, as much as you love them, they sometimes do terrible things. Um, so in this one, Playing for Keeps, there is. Um, a tattoo artist and um, this guy named Caleb who um, accidentally co-rescue a dog and the dog's name is Lollipop and the dog is so cute like Caleb has to when he's driving he has to hold Lollipop's hand because she like she won't sit in the car otherwise like it's just really sweet and funny and you know of course they co-own the dog and so then there's a romance and Obviously, things happen. Every time a new Jill Chalvis comes out, you're like, you need to read this book. And I'm always like, I will at some point. But I think because there's a dog in it, I will actually, like, read a regular heterosexual romance. She's also very funny. She is. And banter is good. I mean, you, the romance you get for the banter and the romance and Jill Chalvis, the dogs, and the friendships. The female friendships I love in romance books. Yes. They are, like, killer if they're done well. They are. Um, yeah. All right, so that has been our good what blah. I cannot talk today. <laughs> uh, that has been good get books for this week, where we featured animals that make you feel great. So heartwarming reads. Yay. Um, all right, so come hang out with us next week. Who knows what we'll be talking about? You speak. Mm. Oh boy.